Hello. So my name is Devashi, and today I will be presenting my work, which I've done with School of Humanity. Let me just share my screen. So in School of Humanity, the learning pathway which I chose was sustainable cities. And we were able to learn about what sustainable cities is, how it works through various means of case studies which exist in the Bay, as well as videos and different learning platforms on the internet. And we learned that sustainable city is essentially a city which has environmental, social and economical aspects of living as long as the coherency with each other is relevant. So the first aspect of it was questioning into what area of sustainable cities I have the most interest in. So I started this off with just listing down a bunch of questions which I had about sustainable city and I divided them into the group of the type of sustainability they are in. And they were all derived from my main topic question, which was whether sustainability is the same all over the world or if it is different. And you can see different questions like relating to the resources, the government, the technology, um, the energy um, derived from it, as well as economic value and that for on. So these are two methods of analysis which we learned. On the left, we can see the root cause analysis, which is just me questioning out five whys. So we started this off with a problem statement, which I've relearned and created. Mine was how low quality sustainability in communities result in um, bad or negative well being for the underprivileged in the bar. And I had three different examples of why this could be and went on from there on asking the root cause of that. And on the right, we have the iceberg model, which is where we label out the systems and identities and authorities present for a certain problem which exists in a society. So here you can see my four main um, systems would be environment, education, society, and government. So from the iceberg model, we learned about the systems present, but we also needed a bigger model to look at just to visualize exactly who is responsible for what. So we created a systems map and I started off my systems map by just um, labeling three areas of sustainability of environmental, social and economical. And then from there went and sub annotated the main systems. And then below that, I was able to find out exactly who is affected by that system, as well as the different systems which go relate to each other. So as you can see in healthcare, obviously social and economical standards would have to be a big part of the decision-making in healthcare, as well as agriculture with the same of economical and environmental. So after we finish a good chunk of our time at School of Humanity doing our pathway, we go on to choosing our skill paths. So usually it's recommended to have a minimum of one hard skill and one soft skill. So I chose one hard skill, which was designing with nature. And I chose two soft skills, which were inclusion and diversity and time management. Um, in inclusion and diversity, we learned a lot about, you know, our subconscious biases and how we are influenced by the people around us and how that results into our way of thinking and certain prejudices we may have towards each other. And in time management, we focus more of an activity-based learning. So we had different tasks set on to us about 
how can we set our to-do list to be the most effective way and actually finish our work more efficiently. So in designing with nature, which is also known as biomimicry, we mainly focused on how that influences design. So biomimicry could be seen as design being inspired from nature, whether, whether that is in design, technologies, innovations. We learned three main case studies, which we were expected to extract information from. Um, these are just two of them. So the first one is the neural networks, which is just a processing information um, theory. This can be seen through machine learning and algorithms in devices or just normal neural networks in our brains. And on the right, we have mushroom packaging, which I think we all know how much waste packaging creates, especially the bad effect it has on the environment. And this is an innovation which was inspired from just the, the hierarchy of mushrooms, what they have in their DNA, and being able to actually create a usable and efficient um, packaging from that. So, Biomimicry usually exists innovations and strategies because you could see in my previous example, the neural networks wasn't necessarily a, a design which you, you could see and work out in a proper setting, but the mushroom packaging wasn't a theoretical design. So there are two aspects of it. And we learned this through functions and strategies in nature. So we had, different organisms which exist, as well as the different strategies and functions they use in terms of biomimicry. There's just some examples here to run up on are the two hump camel, which stores its nutrition in its humps to preserve energy. Um, the desert beetle, which uses its wing covers to capture liquid to store it for later. And rather than looking at just a visual rather as a logical world. Designing with nature allows us to focus on learning from how these specific strategies meet their functions. So the biomimicry design spiral is basically something which helps us learn how different strategies have been found because obviously someone didn't just dream about them. So something which I found very interesting about the spiral is that it's never ending, which means that there isn't necessarily one step which you reach to come to a final biomimicry design. You can always evaluate and continue the cycle further on to learn even more strategies and find ways to implement that into our world, which we live in now. So the design spiral starts with defining, then going on to biologizing the strategy with or the existing example which you want to implement. And then after that, we go on to discover, abstract, emulate, and then evaluate the particular example. And then we do that all over again to either come to a point which we're happy in or find a finding which we find extremely useful and effective in the world. So I found that learning at School of Humanity was extremely different from any other um, traditional learning method I found in school because rather than going into a classroom and studying from textbooks and having an exam, we learn about things we're actually interested in in an environment where we're more enthusiastic to learn more. And that is it for my presentation today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Devashree. That was brilliant. Thank you so much.